What is the Wagner Mercenary Group? And again, what are the purposes that mercenary groups serve? They're used to support allies or they're used to support proxy wars. All right, so it looks like you got a remote deal coming in here from Corey, and we already agreed on a price. Let's just make sure it's all here. There's a lot of stuff in here. Now, let's see what's going on this week. All right. So, Corey, great customer. Very cool. Well hung. I assume. Uh, oh, cool. North Korean silver. Con man versus con man bar. You guys, I honestly don't like buying back my own bullion. You know, I don't think it's, it's. I'm not a fan of yours anymore. I think it's more I just gotta sell this stuff and I wanna sell it back to you. But like, it's, I don't like buying stuff back from people when they're losing money. It just, I, like it makes me uncomfortable. It's like, well then pay up. Well, I'm running a business here. I can't do that. Okay, I got another pun cat. And you guys, these are available on my website too. If you like these uh, silver bullion pieces that are unique to pawn man, me, my life, this is my cat. Check out pawnmanstore.com. All right, 100 ounce bar. Oh, peaches. Oh, peaches. 2,811.10. So there's that and here's all this. And now let's talk about the Wagner Group. So who are the Wagner Group? What's going on with Russia using mercenaries? Why mercenaries? What do mercenaries serve on the battlefield? What purpose? Well, mercenaries are not a new facet of warfare in any way, shape, or form. In fact, mercenaries are as old as warfare itself. The idea of hiring a sellsword, somebody to go do the fighting for you, because for whatever reason you can't or won't do it. So mercenaries in modern warfare are doing a couple of different things. A lot of different nations use them. It's not just Russia. The United States uses them. I wanted to be a mercenary at one point in my head of heads until I saw what was happening to the con contractors, as they call them, in Iraq, getting blown up and doing horrible things and coming back broken people. It was a bad war. They're all bad wars. What am I saying? China uses them. The United Arab Emirates uses them. A lot of African countries, like a lot of rich countries use mercenaries. My One of my favorite book series, you guys, and I honestly can't recommend reading it enough, The Oregon Files by Clive Cussler. It is about a group of mercenaries. They only take pro-American jobs. They don't work for any government. They work for themselves, but they only do jobs in the interest of the United States because they're patriots. So, are these guys patriots? Well, Putin loyalists, if you want to call that patriotism. What is the Wagner Mercenary Group? And again, what are the purposes that mercenary groups serve? They help countries project power. They help them get boots on the ground in places where they can't have boots on the ground because that'd be an invasion. In the Iraq War, companies like the Blackwater Group help the United States project their power in Iraq without having to deploy soldiers, without having to go home and tell families that their kids died because they were doing something stupid like guarding, oh, I don't know, something you want to use a mercenary company to, got to guard rather than your own soldiers. Mercenaries are expendable. They are the expendables, thus the film franchise, the title. They are, in the eyes of a government, more expendable than its own troops. They are the first to die, the first to do the dirty jobs, the first to lay down their lives for stupid shit that is necessary in war in one way or another. Something where it's embarrassing and it's dangerous and it's so dangerous they're expecting you to die. They won't have any insignia to say what country they're from. Essentially, war tourists is, is the plausible deniability. My book series, these guys are not mercenaries. They are an ultra covert unit, very much like the Mission Impossible Hit Squad, but they remove all identification of their American origins. They don't have any American flags. They don't, they don't speak English if they can help it when they're in the field. They speak Hebrew or other shit. They, they all speak many different languages. All their guns are not American guns. They use other guns from other countries just in case something goes south and they get caught in a place they can't be. The opening of this book, they are way in the red curtain in Budapest and something goes south and they have to hide and not get caught because if they get caught, they're not gonna be rescued by the government. They're gonna be denied that they even belong to the government. That's what mercenaries do. Other jobs of mercenaries, local and economic power projection. Mercenaries are often involved, like especially the Wagner Group is involved in Africa in capturing and guarding resources, natural resources, in policing areas in a way that might be brutal. Little shadow stuff to sow chaos in an enemy country. And then the last one I want to talk about what the Wagner Group is doing largely or was doing originally, now they're just commencing open warfare. They're supporting allies. They're used to support allies or they're used to support proxy wars. We, the United States, want to remain number one. We want Russia to crash and burn and fail because they are our political rivals. And we want to do that through a proxy war. We want Russia to grind out its war machine into smithereens, just be obliterated on this war. That is the proxy war of why something like that might be beneficial. Now, this is what they were doing before the war broke out. In 2014, 2015, when Putin annexed Crimea, he had mercenary groups in Ukraine doing fighting. They weren't technically soldiers, and Spetsnaz Special Forces soldiers were involved in the fighting on the ground there, but it was way more covert because Putin had, had well, 
Is, again, he hasn't declared a war. It's a special military operation. It's a f-ing war. So the Wagner Group has two founders. Uh, the first one was way more well known than the second one. The second one has only risen to prominence recently with this war in Russia. The first one is a former GRU Special Forces. That's what this patch is here. Retired Colonel. His name is Dmitry Yudkin, if I'm pronouncing that right. And he is a big fan of the composer Wagner. So that's why he named his mercenary company the Wagner Group. That's it. I'm serious. It's the, that's that's stupid. That's it. So he was the first one. This was in like 2014. It's not known specifically when the group was founded. It is thought 2014. And they got involved right away all over the world doing dirty jobs for Russia that Russia didn't want to be caught doing. The other founder is Yevgeny Prigozhin. I'm sure you've seen this guy. He's the one who just declared the mutiny that happened this past weekend uh, in Russia. So he was more in the shadows. He's a wealthy Russian oligarch businessman. They call him Putin chef because he cooks up anything Putin wants. Like I said, this mercenary company in 2014, when they got founded, they got to work right away doing Putin's bidding. Uh, First in Africa and Syria. When the Arab Spring and the Syrian civil war broke out 10, 12 years ago, I remember they were calling Assad, the dictator of of, uh, Syria, the president. They were calling him a dead man walking and they were laughing because they were saying, you know, the people are gonna tear him to shreds. And he for a while looked like he was not going to in this conflict and then he started all the mass atrocities against his people carpet bombing cities using chemical weapons and then russia brought in the wagner group and that is how he was able to crush the people and win the war it was thanks to russia's support largely this private military company. They were also deployed, like I said, in the early uh, Ukrainian conflict. I mean, that conflict goes back way further than Crimea. Because Putin was going to take Ukraine in three weeks. That was a declaration. That was what the entire world thought, myself included. I thought he was going to kick Ukraine right over and take it and then go from there. But when Ukraine put up the resistance that it did and it became this meat grinder and Russia started running out of soldiers and equipment, Putin turned to the Wagner group and the, the conflict changed. Conflict changed because they started drafting people out of prison. They started taking people on the streets, you know, not only to Putin mobilize people, first time since World War II, but this Wagner mercenary group has put its entire resources as a company, it's a multi-billion dollar company, backing Putin, they're backing him as their horse, and it is destroying their company. The taking of Bakhmut caused so many, so many dead. It, it ground out the Russian private mercenary company and the Russian army. And Prigozhin is a social media whore. He makes provocative videos more so than anyone else. He loves doing theater. So he was getting very frustrated because he's losing money. He's losing his status in Russia. He's losing his his country. And he's trying to argue and do things that nobody can do. Putin is the richest man on earth. Well, he was. Because every time he kills a billionaire, he takes all their money and puts it into his own personal coffers. And in Russia, if you talk out against Putin, even if you're mega wealthy, you LARP the song, I Believe I Can Fly. Your ass gets thrown right out a window. Prigozhin has been so vocal and brazen and blatant, making fun of Russia, making fun of its defense minister, calling out Russia, demanding more guns, screaming about how his company's getting destroyed. He made a video a couple weeks ago. It was one of the gnarliest things I've ever seen. The sun's sitting and he's walking through this field of corpses, literally walking through a field of corpses. He says, my men are all dead. The blood is still warm in their dead hands. And he like picks up like a, like a dead hand. He's blaming Russia for destroying his company. So this past weekend, there was a coup because enough is, enough is enough. And I can't believe they haven't killed this guy yet. So what's going on now? He tried to do a coup. He called it, I think, and I don't know, because there's still new information coming out about this. This is only a few days ever happened. My pet theory is he wanted to make the most provocative social media thing of all time, but he accidentally made Russia look weak as a whole. And he, I think after they took that first town, he realized, like all I've done is sign my own death warrant and destroy my company permanently, destroy my status in Russia permanently, and just f- myself over and f- over Putin. So as of right now, uh, the Russian state has dismantled the Wagner Group and absorbed it into the state itself. So it's not a private mercenary company now. It's 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 a branch of the Russian military, I guess you could call it. Currently, Prigozhin is in Belarus. It is unknown at this time if he's alive or dead. I think he's probably still alive, but I don't think he's gonna live long because like there's no way that Putin can let this stand. I can't believe this happened. It's my own opinion that Russia has now lost the war unless they use a nuclear weapon. I hope I'm wrong. But they were relying so much on the Wagner group and this thing that has happened, this mutiny has has damned their entire war effort, in my opinion. We will see. But I really hope I'm right. So that's the Wagner group. Now these patches are not for sale. Um, I'll show you guys when I get it. But I have, I have a Ukrainian flag. It was signed by soldiers in the field and I had them write Putin to Pond Man. So that's being framed and that's gonna go up here with the Russian general and then I'm gonna have these framed as well. And these are gonna be kind of in between as like, uh, we call it an educational display, but sure. So that's the Wagner Group. 